Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Peter Higgins at Conquest 3 on Twitter. This afternoon, I'm speaking with Aubrey de Grey, um, gerontologist at the forefront of AI, medtech, biopharma, and working with the biotech industry to make some innovative and futuristic um, works come to fruition. Is that well, a suitable introduction for you? I guess it will do. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. I, I call myself a biomedical gerontologist. Yes. So I, that means that I kind of set out the interface between biogerontology, research into understanding the nature of aging, and clinical gerontology, geriatric medicine. In other words, what I do is I try to take what we know about how aging works and turn it into ideas for developing new medicines that will work much better in order to keep people healthy late in life than anything we have today. Now, of course, that's not much of a bar because today we can hardly do anything. It's really quite shocking how much of a contrast there is between what we can do in early life in terms of like keeping people from dying in you know, infancy or in childbirth or whatever relative to what we can do late in life. We sometimes forget that one or two hundred years ago, like huge numbers, like more than one third of babies would die before the age of one. It doesn't happen anymore. And the, um, the real lesson here is that there must be something profoundly different about the health problems of late life that means that those simple medicines that we've developed over the past couple of centuries simply don't work. So that's what I've been pursuing over the past 20 years or more. I've been trying to promote and get people to understand the idea that preventative maintenance is the way to go. That we need to identify the various types of molecular and cellular damage that the body does to itself, inflicts on itself throughout life as just a natural side effect of the body's normal operation. And then eliminate that damage. Not necessarily perfectly, just eliminate most of it every so often mm -hmm. so that it doesn't reach the level of abundance that causes us to get sick. And remember that that's actually quite a high level because that's why we don't get sick that way until late in life. The body is set up to tolerate quite a lot of that damage. So basically what I've been doing and what Sense Research Foundation does, the charity that's been created around my work, we're a public charity based in California, is we pursue that research. We do a variety of different projects that are designed to develop new ways to eliminate various types of damage. And of course, it's a kind of a divide and conquer strategy because there are many different types of damage and they've all got to be eliminated reasonably well or else we're going to die on schedule one way or another. Mm -hmm. um, but we've been very successful over the past decade, especially over the past five years or so, in bringing various projects that were initially incredibly hard, so hard that we would go years and years without getting even a single publication. Um, we've developed those things far enough along that we could even spin them out into startup companies. And of course, that's the reason I'm here, yes. um, that Jim Mellon and his colleagues at Juvenescence have been absolutely at the forefront of providing that investment funding to mm. take these projects forward at a much ra more rapid rate than mm. what was possible beforehand when the funding was purely philanthropic. That's happening more and more. And of course, it's not just projects that we at Sense Research Foundation have gestated. It's also a whole bunch of different um, startup companies that have come along doing closely aligned work. And being in my status as the kind of spiritual leader of this field, I've um, been able to put myself in this very nice position of essentially making sure that the right people talk to the right people and getting the right investments made in the most promising areas of technology. So it's been transformative over the past few years how well the industry has started to emerge and become a real, you know, a movement that moves at the rate that is only limited by the difficulty of the science. Yeah. Now, I don't want to go too far there, because the fact is that there are still some parts of this damage repair approach which have not yet got far enough along to be investable, even by the visionary types like Jim. But they're getting there. I believe that we have a very good chance in the next really couple of years of getting everything far enough along to be properly investable. Okay, so you've also got the likes of Amazon, IBM, and other companies going into that space as well to try and, you know, because what is it, $273 trillion industry that they're all trying to get a piece of the pie off. How do you compete or work and collaborate with those sort of companies? Well, it's certainly not a matter of competing. Um, it's kind of going to be a matter of collaboration. collaboration. 
But at the moment, it's not really either of those things. Because at the moment, those groups are interested in doing things on a much larger scale, which means that they're interested in doing things that are at a later stage. My right. focus is on the things that have only just got to be investable at all. Right. And so the focus is on the you know, six digit, seven digit, eight digit kind of investments, mm. the seed and angel rounds in the yes. Series A. Um, the um, industry, of course, does consist of all of these other much bigger things later on as well. And for sure, the same applies not only to the um, IT companies that you mentioned, but also to Big Pharma. Uh, but Big Pharma, I mean, that's really um, a, a, um, a demonstration of what I'm saying, that Big Pharma don't do much of their own research these days. They, they buy it in. That's they right. They yeah. wait for the risk to be eliminated by other people, and then they, they, they just do acquisition. Mm. And that's a perfectly fine way of doing business. Mm. Um, but then that means that we are in a position where we can move these things forward in small companies to that point. And once we do, fine. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you one final question, if I may, Aubrey. Good. Um, which space within your space now is you think is going to be the largest space going forward in the sense of the growth potential and the beneficiaries of longevity? So there really isn't an answer to that question. And the reason there isn't an answer is, is intrinsic in the nature of the field. Because the damage repair approach is intrinsically a divide and conquer approach, where we've got to fix all of these types of damage, the benefits will come from the combining of things. So each individual thing will give some, in, some benefit to some small subset of people, but combining them you will always get much more than the sum of the parts. Brilliant. Love that. My pleasure. Thank you ever so much, Aubrey. My it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you ever so much and keep up the good work. I'm sure I will. Thank you. Thank you.